We've been having some trying out people's laptops here. So, okay, now we're going. So, um, a guy called Cyril Northcote Parkinson uh, was studying how you build nuclear power plants back in 1957. And uh, he, he studied them and was following the process, and he describes that it's, it's quite a complicated task of building power plants. So, and they had all these like groups who are, were sitting down and discussing how this were to be done and so on and so forth. Um, and he describes how they, instead of like focusing on the really hard parts with, the, with power plants, they tended instead to focus on like parts that everyone could grasp, and the, the really easy parts uh, in, in building a power plant, uh, like the bike shed, for instance, and especially what color the bike shed should have. So, so they were discussing this back and forth, um, and this was documented in his book, Parkinson's Law of... Um, uh, it was documented as Parkinson's Law of Triviality in the book um, uh, The Pursuit of Progress. Uh, and this is what we uh, refer to often as bike shedding, as you may have heard of. So uh, today I hope to show you a tool which can uh, help you avoid a lot of bike shedding. Uh, so uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Johannes. Uh, as you heard, I run a company called Confetti. We make a tool for event organizers. Uh, and uh, we'll get back to why, why that matters. Uh, I've also, I also run a, a meetup group called Stockholm JS. Uh, we're having a meetup later today, actually. Uh, not here, here, but like two rooms away. So you're very, very welcome to attend that. Uh, and I also arrange a conference called Nordic.js. Okay, so a little bit of agenda for today. Uh, I think I have 15 minutes, including questions. So this will be rather quick, I hope. So I hope to cover some, some basics of JSON API and hopefully we have time for some questions at the end. So I hope you, how you, how you to show you how you can use this to end pointless discussions, uh, make your APIs more future-proof, and how to make it happen in reality. So, who have heard about JSON API? And, and no, I don't talk about like any JSON API which can be easily serialized into XML using this fine IBM library. I'm talking about a very specific JSON API, namely the specification JSON API. Anyone heard of it before? Anybody used it? Yeah, a couple of you, okay. Um, so, okay, let's imagine we have our everyday uh, REST uh, API, representational, representational state transfer API. Uh, we use our H fancy HTTP verb to, to send stuff around and modify different resources. And we may sit down and start to like design this API. How do we want it to look? How do we want it to work? Uh, and let's say we're building an event platform. No reason, we just, that's just our idea how, what we're building here. And we want to represent an event in, in JSON. So we start out like this. Okay, we make a get request to, to event slash one and we get back something like this. Uh, we have an ID and we have a title. So I mean, we're basically done. Um, and then co in comes the next thing, right? We wanna have like attendees on our events. So we add a new endpoint, event slash one slash attendees, and here we respond with an array with attendees. Looking good so far, but then we kind of realize it's kind of cumbersome to have to make two requests all the time. Like, because basically we, we go fetch the event, and then right after we go on to fetch the attendees, and, and, and we want to optimize this. So, so then we want to put the attendees right into the event so we get it right away. Uh, Good, there we have the attendees, perfect. Uh, really easy to use, everybody can understand it. But then suddenly we have the case of also wanting to know what other events the attendees are going to. So we wanna present this on a, on a page. And we wanna add it to in, into the same payload. So we go back to our design meeting and start to discuss this. And, and somewhere around here where we wanna include the, the events, then we're, this is where kind of the discussion starts, like how are we supposed to solve this? And you can go on for days about how we can solve this, and you can change your mind, and it can be huge discussions. But I mean, this is this is kind of pointless actually, because um, it's better to to find an approach that works for you and will will continue to work in the future. So, enter JSON API. Um, this will be our approach of of, of solving this. Uh, 
and and the the one point is is released now, uh, and they have kind of philosophy of only add, never remove. So the idea is that like uh, newer clients can always read older versions or APIs built with an with an older version of this. Um, so so yeah, we'll we'll maybe get back to that if we have time. So okay, now let's design the same API with the JSON API approach. Uh, it's, I know it's a really bad name, but, but it's, it's a good thing, though. Uh, okay, so let's get back to our, like, our event uh, response. It could now look something like this. So instead of just having the ID and the title, we now add a lot of stuff here. So we can instantly see that we have our, our data member uh, in the top. And, and data will, will, from now on, represent the, the main thing we want to return from this endpoint. So, so that's kind of the, the gist of the response. This is, this is what you were asking for, mainly. And then the record has a type and an ID. And, and these are specified by the specification, so every record should have a type and an ID. And also be identifiable using the type and the ID. So having these, you should always be able to know if you have the record or if you need to go fetch it. And then we also have some attributes. Um, yeah, so uh, we, can, we can have do the same for, for many events. So instead of just returning, like using data for returning one, one event, we can use it to return a whole array of events. So remember, data is what we use to to return whatever we want the endpoint to, to mainly return. Okay, so let's look a bit about how we would go on, on adding the attendees to an event. So just like with attributes, we have something called relationships. And you can't have the same member in both, of obvious reasons. Uh, wouldn't make sense. So here we have a relationship called attendees. And again, you see we have the data thing here which is the main thing that it's supposed to represent. So in this case, it represents an array um, where we have like, not the full object, but just the pointers to the object. So remember, we can always identify a record using the type and the ID. So here we have an, an array uh, using these. Okay, uh, and I, yeah, I snipped it out, so it, it continues on the next slide here. Uh, because now, alongside with data, we also add something called included. So included is all the data you didn't ask for, but you'll get anyway. So basically, here we have the person we were, were referencing before. Uh, so we have the type of the record, and we have the ID. And again, we see the person has a name and a relationship back to the event, which is only the type and the ID. So this is kind of how we solve circular referencing using JSON API. Quite fancy. Um, where were my? There he is. Uh, okay, so we've talked about data. We talked about included. So I want to want to show you something called links. So with with relationships, for instance, but this goes for all like top level uh, thing in JSON API. Uh, we have something called links. And links is kind of interesting because now you remember that these were only pointers to the actual records. We have type and ID to be able to reference uh, the persons. And then we have the links. And this special link called related is supposed to return the full uh, objects. So here you get the pointers in data. And if you want the full objects, you can use the link related to go fetch them. So we would expect to, to get the full like person object if we go to that link. And this is kind of cool. It's a, it looks like a small thing, but what this actually means is that we don't ourselves need to type in this URL somewhere in our, our app. Uh, we can have the client do that for us. So we can have a JSON API client which can understand the API for us. So one step closer to singularity. Uh, and, and this is really cool, because then you can just tell the client, I want the event and I want all the attendees. And then the client for itself can see, OK, yes, here is the event. Did I get the attendees? And then it can check, like, do I already have them loaded? 
And if it don't, it knows where, where it can go fetch them. So I think this is kind of, kind of interesting. Um, and we also have, have a self-link, uh, and it just links back to yourself. So that's just where you can go fetch all the um, uh, links to the attendees. Like, for instance, if we were to have, yeah, lots of attendees, more than we can, like, return the links to, we can instead, or, or the reference to, we can instead just point you to a link and say, we don't give them to you here, but you can fetch them on this link if you want them to. Uh, and here we also added some metadata. So in this case, we, we just add a count for how many they are. And metadata, you can use that for anything. So that can be specific to your API, stuff you want to return. OK, pagination. So when I, uh, or at least in, in the past, when I've looked at like new JavaScript frameworks or new web frameworks, I, I started going by, by like determining how mature they are by looking at how do they solve pagination. So have, have they, like, if I, if I search for this, have anybody solved this? And do they have a library for this? In that case, it's kind of mature. So I thought I'd show you how you would go solve the, like, pagination of data using JSON API. Um, so again, we solve this with links. So all these links are in the specification. So whenever you encounter uh, first, next, previous, and last links, uh, you know you have page data. And you, you know you can, can continue paging it until you don't have a next link anymore. And if you want to know exactly how many you have, you can just add your own metadata to, to specify this. And again, this is really interesting, because then you can have a client page the API for you. Like, if you have a standardized JSON API client, you don't even have to write it yourself. You can just say, uh, go and get me uh, 100 events. And then it doesn't matter to you how many is returned per page, because that's determined by the client and the API. Uh, so, so you see where this is going, kind of. We, we have some kind of self-discoverable API here. So basically, like in, in the best of worlds, we only have to point our client, like, here is the API. Go get me stuff. And it will understand for itself what it's supposed to do. Uh, OK, so just I want to show you some basic uh, CRUD actions, which you can do. Create a read, update, and delete. We only looked at read. But uh, so if you were to create uh, a new event, for instance, we can do it like this, really straightforward. Uh, we just post the same thing we are supposed to get back from an event. And here you also see it, uh, the MIME type for JSON API. So it actually has its own registered MIME type. Uh, so the idea here, you remember the like only add, never delete strategy. Uh, so the idea is as soon as you see this MIME type, you can just like point your JSON API client to it and you'll be able to consume the API. Uh, really good in theory. Uh, and then we have uh, our patch um, calls here. So uh, instead of put, we use patch because yeah, the put replaces basically what we have on the endpoint and patch will um, let us add only uh, what we need to change. Okay, so you may be looking at this, unless, like, this looks really complicated. Why is this even useful? Why would I want to have this in my project? So, um, again, I want to tell you a story about uh, Nordic.js. Um, on Confetti, we, we use Nordic.js as kind of our, our test event or our dog food event. So we try out new stuff for Nordic.js. And uh, to be able to do this, we kind of built, we have a like, small API, and then we build a lot of apps around it. So we, when we want to try something, we can build a new app. And the, then we like, needed a way to be able to really quickly be able to just add a new app um, without b having to like, share a whole bunch of, like here are our data models and stuff like that. And then we found JSON API and started using it, and it's, it has been really helpful to us. Uh, when developing new stuff we want to try out. So, so helpful actually, uh, we built our own library for using it because we started with this when JSON API was really young and nothing was good was, wasn't really out there, so we, we, um, uh, we wrote a package for it in JavaScript. Uh, so uh, I, I know there are a lot of implementations, so you can probably find it in your favorite language as well. Uh, but this library uh, works both on the client side and on the server side if you're running Node or similar. 
so I just want to show you real quick how it looks uh, when we use it to like give you an idea of how how easy it can be to work with. So so basically, this is how how you can work with it. So you just require it, uh, and you create a new store. And the store is basically just a place where you can sync down the data you get back from an endpoint. So what we're doing here is we're um, using some kind of service to be able to get some data. And when we got some data back, we just sync it down the store. Uh, and then we can perform different operations on the store. So for instance, we can uh, try and find an event. And then when we have the event, uh, you see that it has built up all the relations for us without we ever telling it that an event has attendees. It can understand this for, for itself and even solve like circular referencing. So this is really useful. Uh, and we also made it easy to like create these resp responses with something we call presenters. So basically you just make a presenter like this and you just specify, yeah, it has these kinds of relationships and it will build the whole response for you. Uh, so this presentation layer is also like totally separate from, from the rest of, of the app, which is really good. Um, and we also use it in, in whole different ways because this makes it really easy to create uh, new endpoints uh, where you just specify now we don't want these relationships, we want these instead and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, another thing why this can be really cool, you can, you can use it to because the client is supposed to understand what it gets back, so you don't have to tell it about it. And that makes, it gives you the option to, to change the response on the server. So instead of always returning the same, uh, like this, maybe we do this for like, I don't know, a really simple case. We, whenever we get this user agent, we suppose it's, okay, it's probably a desktop, so we'll give it a lot of events, because we, on a web page or something, we show a lot of events. Uh, but then we notice that maybe the, on the phones, we don't need to, to send that many events. So whenever somebody comes with a phone instead, maybe we only send five events. And this can be changed like without the clients having to be updated. Uh, and I mean, this is a really easy example, but I, I think you, you understand where I'm going. Uh, yeah. And it contains a lot more. Um, yeah, we, I think we only have uh, two minutes left, so I won't be, be long about this. Um, but as, as I said, there's like, this is, I don't know, not even the most recent list, but it's, yeah, it's a lot of implementations to choose from, so you can probably find, yeah, you have the, the Java part, it's down here. Um, yeah, so really cool stuff, right? So I think we have one minute for questions. <laughs> Oh, and I also have like, if you ask questions, I'll give you a hat, like the one I'm wearing. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, um, so here. Uh, Hi. Why the introduction of links at JSON level? I mean, the HTTP protocol already has literally a links header for that. Why, what's the benefit of uh, putting it in inside JSON? Okay, so the question is, why do we add links inside the inside library instead of using like HTTP? Yeah, you mean, I mean like using links like that? Well, basically, I'd say this is not really the same form of links. I mean, um, because adding it in, in a response like that makes us, gives us more flexibility in what we return. So instead of having to return a whole collection of something, we can just reference it to, to links in the collection that we return. So if, if you use like HTTP links for that, every response cannot know what you already have. In but the it, same, in a, in a sense. But it, it's, it's the exact same format, isn't it? I mean, it, yep. the header links has relationship and where to, to point at. So what you're doing is ex externalizing the links header to the JSON f response instead. I'm just curious if there's any yeah. point in that. To solve. Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, there's of course several ways of solving this, I guess. Uh, and and I'm, I'm not quite sure. I understand how the, that would solve the same case. Uh, but you'll have to show me afterwards. So I have one more question. 
I, I think your code example was using CoffeeScript, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Is that a standard thing uh, where you're working? Or are you choosing to stick with that over using ES6? Uh, so, so yeah, we have been building a CoffeeScript for, for a while. Um, we've been looking to, to migrate it to, to E6, but it's just how we started out, so, yeah. Okay, I guess time's up. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I just want to point to you real quick, there are some links here. Uh, if you go to this URL, uh, I would be really happy that you can find the slides and you can give me some feedback on my talk uh, and connect with me. So, yeah, thank you for listening.